going on guys it's 2 29 in the afternoon it is the 7th of Oct of uh, november 2023 the weaver john c of rosamond the california is online <coughs> okay in response to emails i do appreciate the feedback bring them in and here's a lovely situation here some have been asking me certain items, whether or not, if I have any experience, or actually if I am of age, of sorts, do I know what I'm saying? Do I know what I'm going through? Well, at least I think I do last time I checked. Let's see, somewhere there's a driver's license that will actually have my age on it. And also a birth date would probably tell me I'm well over 50. Being 57, you would think one would be aware of this kind of stuff, don't you think? As for a shower and shave, well, since the screens don't emanate odors, there shouldn't be any issues with that. As for nail hygiene, well, I probably do need to have them examined by a doctor whether or not I got enough creatinine or enough minerals to keep them alive and healthy. And yes, purchase another nail clipper to use. And since I'm hardly ever in contact with some people on the outside, but still, it's needed. Those clippers are needed. Of course, somebody was worrying about whether or not I'm focusing on other issues these days. Well, why not? Why not? We're going to be dead to the world left and right. We're going to be emotionally and physically dead to the world left and right. we got to be permanently happy. One would think I'm permanently miserable. Well, I'm not. Almost. You guys have been watching the videos long enough. You guys have been understanding where I'm coming from. And maybe you would understand. Being judgmental of a person at this point over here doesn't exactly help conversations very much. And yes, there are things I've gone through that you hadn't gone through. So, this version of your own, of hell, hell is usually experienced by the individual of whatever the hell, <laughs> chaos and confusion they're going through. Trust me, I've been through the halls of recovery. I've also been on the streets. I've been around. I just don't advertise it as much. But if I do... I'll talk about it in great length. Probably just the other video I was sending over to uh, to the Jesse Dollamore and a cohort of his, Brittany Page, a licensed clinical psychologist who's been examining things on her own and becomes an expert in homelessness. She'll become a true homelessness expert if she ever became homeless. If they actually lost that, and how would they be able to deal in the streets if they actually were able to live and survive? Good for them. But for those who are caught off guard, you know how it's like, don't we? We scramble, we crash on people's couches if we actually had the people available or actually didn't do the NIMBY. Been there, done that. So yeah, never a fun place. As for keeping my head up, well, it is up. It's not constantly down, otherwise I'd really have a need for a chiropractor, and I don't I don't want to deal with chiropractors. I've dealt with them before. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. So I don't deal with them schmucks in the first place. Concerning about dealing with my own depression and my own physical energy these days. Some days are good days and other days are not. If you guys actually understood what the grieving and mourning process is, there are certain key phrases, certain key words out there that I've experienced in my head coming across left and right in one form of stimulus or another that would set up the process and make me a very most depressive person around. And yeah, I would bellyache about the damn process. Nobody else wants to hear about it, put it on video. But here's the thing. 
when you actually continue to put it on flash drives, does anybody else care to know what's going on? Only if the person is willing to share the pain and misery. But what if you don't want to share it? Then nobody will know. But do you want the people to know? And if you do want the people to know, what's the motivation? The motivation is telling people, look, I heard like a son of a bitch, and I'm trying to tell you about it. But if you don't want to listen to it, walk away like everybody else. Turn up the damn channel. Just tune me out. As I said before, the channel is a lifeboat. The channel is a lifeboat. My thoughts, my feelings, my memories, my experiences, my observations. And on occasions, I will put something on there, probably through the, probably through the mic, of what I'm listening to, that may or may not have something to do with something. Just to let you know, yeah, I'm still in tune with the world. I can also walk through that door, you understand, and walk my dog and listen to people left and right. I can also listen to people over here. But I can also go on a bus and talk with people. I can also go into a store and talk with people. I can also talk to people at different places if I so chose, or if I'm in the route for. So don't get me as a, just a pure closet person, even though I am turning out to be on some occasions. I can experience interaction with people. I've done it before. I can still do it again. There's no reason for that. Now, for some of those folks out there who think I need to get a meeting hall, I need to get to a meeting hall. You're damn straight, I do. But <laughs> transportation sucks around here. So either you have a car, or you don't have a car. If you do have a car, you're lucky. If you don't have a car, you're sick. You sick. You're dependent upon public transportation or the kindness and the charity of, of strangers around here. Or maybe if you've got connections with people in the other meeting halls, it actually might take a difference to you. Problem is, nobody has been. So-called friends and so-called acquaintances. Oh, I'm sorry, who the hell are you again? I used to go over here several years ago. I've never seen you over here. Who the hell are you again? Yep. As for me, being in my own, stuck in my head all the time, well, where else am I going to be stuck in? Your head? I'll just find a space in your cranium in there, run out a little piece of uh, brain flesh in there, and call it home, and just stay in there for a long while. You'll have to deal with the madness of me. And after that, who knows? Of course, if you're willing to endure and endure this pathetic excuse of a human being, then so be it. Now, since I've already got you, now since I've already been imprinted in your skull, you probably would never leave me alone, and I would never leave you alone. You're screwed. <laughs> you're screwed. So I live, I exist, I dream, I go nuts. And yes, we do go through life on life's terms. On this channel, I try talking about things I've gone through and experienced, read about, even if it happens to be at a college campus. And yes, half the logs I've got, or actually some of the logs I'm producing still, haven't been properly labeled. Just send a wind file. When I get to them, I get to them. When I don't, I don't. But if it's really important, I will label them. Just sometimes I'll just miss a lot of them. But I'm doing it because it's necessary. Until I get to the things and take care of them all. So I'm doing the best I can for right now. People's going to say, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Get a haircut get a real job. I'll be thinking like, okay, this guy is a product from the 90s. He listened to George Thorogood, and he's, having, he's into heavy metal rock. He probably listened to KLOS. 
Nothing wrong with a Cal OS. I missed that radio station. I can't find it, can't get it, so. But I was in love with it for a long while. Being a native in California, especially in Southern California, Cal OS was the rock station. So we are dealing with what we're dealing with right now as it is. Things are happening and we're trying to deal with it. Now consider this a discussion with folks. This is not like I'm going to be saying, I blame you for everything else and so let's get into an argument. No, we're going to be having disagreements a little bit here and there. And yes, I hear you. And yes, I've read the comments. And yes, I go without washing your hair every once in a while. And the body. And I do use Right Guard and Old Spice a great deal. But I do a shower. I have to take care of this mortal, this, this deteriorating mortal corpse of mine. Because if I don't take care of it thoroughly enough, I'm going to lose this mortal corpse. And I realize that. And if you guys bother to understand and, and listen to some of the channel, you know I've been there and done that already as a four-year-old. So yeah, I have mixed feelings concerning about life and death at the same time. And not to mention how dealing with dealing with situations is just I'm dealing with them. Today is a day between class days. I do some work, I take time off, I do some more work, I take time off. I have to get myself ready and mentally prepared for tomorrow to see what happens in tomorrow's lesson plans and to see how bad I'm going to be doing in test scores. Me and math don't mix. We're not talking about 1 plus 1 equals 3. Find the X. We're talking about something that I've been dealing with that scares me sometimes. New concepts that I hadn't come across in my lifetime, nor will I. <laughs> But it's for academia purposes, and I have to have this for academia purposes. Excuse me, one quick second here. Well, I really didn't want to give you any issues concerning about certain biological situations, now do I? I'm also in the last few weeks of college and dealing with my math class, as I said before, but also with my English class. After that, we'll see what happens for next term which I'll be reporting on. Not bad for a 57-year-old fort that's been over there for about seven to eight years. Yeah, seven to eight years. And that includes the COVID nightmare in dealing with Zoom classes, two at a time. My brother, a long time ago, God rest his soul, he tried it in his adult stage, and he couldn't deal with it. He had a heart attack. He was pushing it. He was pushing it in his history class, but mostly in his math class, studying for a test, test and a quiz. And he was pushing himself way, way too hard in the parking spot close to his class. And I was with him at the time. I had just started my first semester and he was doing his second semester. He had issues with stress to the point where he was almost be turning blue and I'm going to the nearest pole and told him where the hell I was and what was going on. Next thing I hear in about one or two seconds is EMS being activated. And then with me, for the lack of love of driving a vehicle of any sort, I had to drive the damn car to the hospital while they took him through the ambulance. And when I got him stabilized enough and running through the test, he wanted to get the hell out of there. He hated hospitals, and there was a lot of reasons for this one. Maybe I'll do another video to explain it. 
not just yet. Suffice it to say, we got out under duress. The doctors were pissed off at my brother. They wanted him to stay because they were still waiting for test results. And then they got the cardiac enzymes. Now, the enzymes will tell you whether or not you're going to be in trouble or not because it would be picking up what's happening within the heart just by just by how the uh, enzymes were under a microscope. And they were concerned. They wanted to keep David overnight. He wasn't going to stay there. He went home. He drove. He got recovered enough. Now, this wasn't an angina attack. This was a heart attack. But then again, it was told to me a long time ago, and China attacks were all heart attacks. He was adamant. I'm surprised they didn't keep him there. I would have stayed there overnight, but I was not driving home. I was not going to drive home. I'll sleep in the damn car. Not comfortable, but done it before. Actually, in a truck. Not fun either. Oh, well, we had a station wagon. Junk in the back. Still had to be taken care of. That would have been done, but they wouldn't allow any camping on on a hospital property. I would have to find some other place to stay. And when you didn't have enough money to pay for a motel room, what else do you do? And this is coming from a college student. Things were different a long time ago. His doctor had a field day with my brother and with me. He chewed him out and chewed me out. De facto caregiver. So what happens when you try to take care of your brother? And then you get to be yelled at. I did. And then I get to yell at my brother for putting me through this damn bullshit in the first place. But this is what brothers go through when they take care of each other. He couldn't go back. The stress was too much for him. I continued on and been that way. I've been struggling myself with him and still doing my best on him. GPA is not that bad. It's not in the toilet, thank God. But I'm still struggling. The only thing I can do day by day is struggle with the classes. Struggle with the work. But this is about being in college. Two classes at a time. Imagine if I took about four classes. That would be a lot more stress. So I take it longer or slower. It helps spread out the stress. I focus more on the topic. And I still struggle with the damn thing. <laughs> Especially when it comes down for the math. Math for liberal arts. <laughs> so, for right now, that's what I'm doing. Other than that, I will keep you folks surprised what's going on and respond to more critics when I can. I appreciate the feedback, both positive and otherwise. And no, this means I don't have a... Oh, great, he just sent that over to me. How dare he? Does he know who he thinks I am? Yeah, we'll make light of it, don't we? Okay, guys.